Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Welcome back to International Relations 101. Today's topic is principal agent problems. So this starts off a new unit, and in this unit we're going to be interested in answering the question, how can individual incentives cause war? Now thinking back to what we've done previously on IR 101, we had a unit on war in general, and we know from that unit that wars are bad, wars are costly, they destroy things, they kill people, they're generally things that we want to avoid, and yet wars happen anyway. And so we've looked at possible explanations for why that might be the case. Starting in that unitary actor explanation for war unit, we saw that bargaining problems can prohibit negotiated settlements, even when the conditions would seem to be perfect for settlement, where wars are both costly and we have unbiased leaders who are acting perfectly. They're doing the perfectly intelligent thing, and yet we know wars can happen anyway. In the last couple of units, we switched over to regime types, talking about how the domestic structure of government can affect the prevalence of war. So we've been talking about democracy and capitalism there in terms of democracy being a governmental system and capitalism being an economic system and how those might affect the prevalence of war. And while we're going to be talking a lot about regime types in this unit as well, how an individual government is structured, we're going to move away from a big macro situation where we're talking about democracy and capitalism and look more closely at how the individual leaders' abilities and incentives might affect war. And so we're essentially going to be seeing how poor leadership oversight can cause conflict. Now, this dates back to a literature that's really popular in both political science and economics called the principal agent problem. And principal agent problems surround you in your everyday life. You've probably encountered one already today. When you are trying to get things done, you might not be able to do it all by yourself. We can't always do everything that we want to do. And our, the common solution to this problem is to hire someone to do things for you. So if you work for a business, then someone is has decided that he or she can't do what he needs to be done. And so he or she is hiring you to do that for him or her. But this creates another problem. The person that you hire might not want to do things just like you want them to do. And so that can cause an issue. And this is what we call the principal agent problem. So the principal is the person doing the hiring. The agent is the one who is supposed to be doing the bidding of the principal, but the agent might not do what the principal wants. And that is a problem. So for example, trying to relate this to classwork, imagine a professor says to his TA that he wants the TA to spend 20 minutes grading each essay. Well, think about this from the perspective of the TA. The TA perhaps could spend 20 minutes just like the professor wants him to, or he could spend 10 minutes. And you can imagine a situation where the TA has a lot of other stuff to do. Perhaps he has to take a test or write a paper or something like that. And taking 20 minutes grading each exam might be too costly for him. And so he might want to skirt that responsibility. He might think to himself, eh, 20 minutes, I don't want to do that. Doing this in 10 minutes each, that would make me a lot happier. So I'm going to spend just 10 minutes grading each essay. I'm going to ignore what the professor says. This would be an example of a principal agent problem where the professor has hired the TA to spend time grading the exams, and he wants the TA to spend 20 minutes grading those exams, and yet he only gets the TA to do 10 minutes because he can't actually monitor what the TA is doing. And so this leads to a few situations where you can actually look at when are principal agent problems going to be more prevalent and when are they not going to be. Well, when preferences are not aligned, that's a problem. If the TA actually wanted to grade each assignment, spending 20 minutes on each assignment, then this isn't a problem. The professor doesn't have to worry about the TA not spending 20 minutes on the assignment if the TA actually wants to spend 20 minutes on the assignment. So if preferences are aligned, you don't have a problem. But if they're not aligned, well, this is going to cause issues. Now, even if you have preferences that aren't aligned, as long as the person who is doing the hiring, the principal, can monitor the agent effectively, then you're still good to go because if the agent tries to deviate from what the principal wanted, the principal can punish him. But this is not always plausible. Remember that principals are hiring agents to do the work for them. And so if the professor were to, say, spend all of his time looking over the TA's shoulder to make sure the TA is, in fact, spending 20 minutes on each exam, well, that sort of defeats the purpose of delegating the task to the TA in the first place. So if monitoring isn't going to be working very well, then you're going to run into these problems if you don't have aligned preferences. Now, 
even if you have monitoring problems and even if you have preferences that aren't aligned, you can still overcome this if you're able to offer the proper incentives. So perhaps there's a 50-50 chance the professor will figure out that the TA has done shoddy work. And that's fine. That might actually get the TA not to skirt the work and actually spend 20 minutes as long as the professor can offer the correct incentives to thank the TA for doing the proper amount of work. If the professor can offer some sort of reward or, in contrast, some sort of punishment if the TA doesn't do well, then this will get the TA to behave the way the professor wants to, despite the fact that the professor may or may not be able to actually see what the TA is doing. So that's where you get vulnerability in the principal agent problem. And now in this unit, we're going to be applying the principal agent problem to leadership explanations for war. So you might have a situation that looks like this. The populace says to the leader, we only want to go to war when it's necessary. But the leader, for whatever reason, might want to go to war. That might be what makes him happy. Or he might not want to. And so what we're going to try to figure out is what sort of situations lead to this this problem where the leader actually does, doesn't want to do what the populace wants him to do, where he prefers going to war, even though the populace would actually want him to not go to war. So that's what we're going to be doing in this unit. And that wraps up this video. And join me next time when we actually jump into these kinds of explanations. Take care.